Hello everyone. In this screencast, I'm going to demonstrate the new features of PyCharm 2.6 for supporting the development of Flask web applications. For those of you who are not familiar with Flask, it's a Python micro framework that provides an easy way to develop small web applications. During the screencast, we are going to complete the Flask tutorial. We'll start with creating a new project. We select the project type, the Python interpreter to use, and enter the project name. Uh, PyCharm creates the initial project structure for us. Since we are going to use SQLite as the database for the tutorial, we'll start with specifying the SQL dialect to use. Now we will define the schema for our database. As you can see, PyCharm provides powerful code completion support in SQL files. The next step is to specify the settings for our application and to add some code that loads them from the attributes of the current module. Now we add the function to initialize the database connection. PyCharm's code completion also works for identifiers that we haven't yet imported. We use the expand word shortcut to, exp to complete the database string. We will use the initDB function to load the schema we've defined into the actual database. Note how PyCharm's code completion and parameter info pop-ups help us with writing almost every method call. The Python console embedded into PyCharm lets us run the initDB function without leaving the ID. Note that the code completion works just as well in the console. We will paste in some helper functions to initialize a database connection for every request. Note how we use, we use the auto import feature to import the G name. Now it's time to define a view function, which will be called when a request is sent to a particular URL. PyCharm provides a handy live template to make it this easier. Just type route and press tab to generate a view function definition. Now we enter the name of the function and the URL that it handles. We will paste in the body of the function and auto import the render template method. For the second view function, we will use the route p template, which sets the HTTP method of the view function to post. PyCharm knows that the string parameter of URL4 is the name of a view function and provides navigation and code completion for parameter values. The route GP live template expands to a function that accepts both get and post HTTP methods. We will paste in the view functions for login and logout. Now we proceed to the next step of the tutorial, defining the templates. Flask uses the Jinja template language, which is fully supported by PyCharm. PyCharm notes that the template we are ref referencing from the render template method does not exist and offers us a quick fix to create it for us. PyCharm fully supports code completion of a template tags in Jinja 2 files. We can also use a quick fix to create a template from usage. As you can see, completion for HTML tags, attributes, and attribute values is supported. Note how PyCharm highlights a hard-to-notice syntax error in the template file and tells us exactly what we did wrong. We will correct the error now. In order to write HTML code faster, we can use Zen coding templates, which are CSS-like expressions that expand to large blocks of HTML code.
The completion for the URL4 function and its arguments works just as well in a Jinja2 template as it does in plain Python code. We will use a live template to generate a for tag with a matching ending tag. Note how the name of the loop variable is automatically suggested. We can also use Zen coding to surround a block of HTML code with a tag or a bunch of nested tags. The block live template automatically looks at the list of blocks defined in the template that we are extending and suggests us to choose one of them. We will paste in the remaining templates and the stylesheet file. Note how we use PyCharm's navigation bar is a handy way to navigate the structure of the project. Finally, it's time to run our application. We will use the run configuration that PyCharm has automatically created for us and simply click the run button to start it. Then we'll click a link in the output console to open a browser with our application. As you can see, the application actually works. That concludes our tutorial. You are welcome to try PyCharm for yourself during a 30-day free evaluation period and enjoy its productivity benefits when working on your own projects. At the time of the recording, PyCharm 2.6 is available as an early access preview version. You can download it from eap.jetbrains.com.